Gotta members, welcome back to another episode of Gotta TV. In our last episode, we did a full recap of the 2023 Gotta Annual Convention, which was another record-breaking success. If you missed that episode, click the link in the description below to go back and watch. During that episode, we introduced you to the three new members of the Gotta Board, including this year's Mr. X, Kevin Falconer, president of Minneapolis Oxygen Company. We are lucky enough to have Kevin join us today. Kevin, thank you so much for being with us today. Can we start by having you take us inside the process of joining the executive committee? What were the conversations like in the run-up to convention? I, I can easily do that because it I remember it like it was yesterday. Um, Bob Ewing texted me, and uh, although it's uh, always a pleasure to get communication from Bob Ewing, it typically never comes from text. So I thought something was up as soon as that as soon as he was asking uh, to talk to me the next day, I kind of knew something was up. Um, so I had that night to think about if Bob was going to ask the question I thought he was going to ask. And uh, when we spoke the next day, uh, sure enough, he did. Um, we had a great conversation. Um, he laid out his cost benefit argument uh, to me, which was very compelling. Um I tried to argue back and tell him I was the wrong choice and this was going to be his first bad decision as God of president. Um, but as we all know, Bob is a very skilled debater, I think uh, high school and collegiately. Um, and so my efforts proved uh, pretty futile. Um, he reiterated his cost benefit argument to me again, reflected on his time of service on the executive committee and as president and um, just how rewarding they were both personally and professionally, and um, just how much more rewarding they were than he actually thought they would be moving into that role. Um, I tried again to tell him it was a massive mistake. Um, and then he reiterated uh, again um, that I was the right guy for the job, that um, he he thought I could do it, which meant a lot. Um, you know, you you're friends with people in this organization. You look up to a lot of the people in the organization, especially when you look down the, the past president's list and see those names of those people. And um, I just had a hard time envisioning my name alongside those people. And uh, Bob assured me that um, the risks were um, way outweighed by the reward. And so, um, so yeah, it was, that's kind of how it went. And after that, it was it was just talking to my people and, and, you know, seeing if we couldn't make it happen. You've been very active within GOTA, but I know this isn't the first time this opportunity has presented itself. We've talked previously about how you've wrestled with this idea before. What changed this time and prompted you to ultimately accept? Yeah, I've been teased quite a bit about um, possibly being uh, on the executive committee or president. And it's something that I always try to distance myself from and um, dismiss. Um, but really, once it came to reality, and this this question was in front of me, um, it was time to do some digging. And so at that point, I, um, I called some trusted people within the industry that I knew had served in this role in the past, outside of Bob. Um, I wanted to get their opinions and um, some color as to how they approach the role. Uh, what would the what was the time commitment? How did, how was uh, how did work function when you were off doing these um, your, these roles as on the executive committee or as president? Um, and then yeah, I I had some concerns about my own abilities to do both jobs at the same time, um, and I knew I didn't want to be half in, so. Um, this was something that, you know, if I was going to do it, I wanted to jump in completely and, and be fully present. So um, I, smoke, I spoke with a small team here at MO2 after I talked to a couple of past presidents. Um, it was pretty easy decision and discussion with the team here at MO2. Um, and then, you know, the last piece was talking with my wife um, and she loves this industry and this association as much, if not more than I do. Um, she loves to give back to the, to people in her sphere. And, and I feel the same way. And we just looked at it as an opportunity for us to give back to an organization full of people um, we look up to and enjoy. GOTA is a volunteer association, including the board, and it's a big time commitment. 
especially when you're the president. So what was the conversation inside MO2 like, and what made you feel comfortable laying out this time commitment this time? Like I said, um, I think that it was a pretty easy decision for me and my team. Um, you know, I've been able to leave for a week, week and a half, two weeks, um, and the place doesn't burn down. It functions. We actually get business done. And um, sometimes I wonder if my my being here might hinder business getting done. But, um, you know, in all seriousness, I think my myself and my father and and people within this organization have benefited from um, being in service roles for GADA. Um, I I was on the insurance committee for a while. Uh, I served on the board of directors. My brother-in-law, Dana Sorensen, um, recently got his plaque for serving a, on the member services committee. Um, and so people within the walls of MO2 have seen uh, what, what volunteerism looks like in this industry, and they've seen the benefits of it when they come to uh, a GATA event and they see all of that different moving parts and the amount of people it takes to pull this off. And, um, you know, at the end of the day, this is a service, it's a member led industry. And, um, when your name is called, uh, you lean in and you do the best you can, um, because that's how an organization like this keeps running. You just touched on it a little bit, but how do you feel that your GATA membership has benefited you personally and your business at MO2, and how will serving on the executive committee allow you to pay that forward? You know, GATA offers so many resources to member companies, um, and it's always growing. Uh, this organization truly wants what's best for each member company and person with and individual within those companies. Um, you know, it could be safety and compliance. It could be continued education for your people or just the growth and prosperity for each of our businesses. Um, GATA really wants that for, for our businesses and for our people. And so when you look at giving back, like it's a, it's a circle, it's a wheel. And um, this is just my time in the wheel to give back and, and do what I can to keep that wheel moving forward for, for the generations to come. So I know you've got a few years before you need to officially commit to a theme, but have you begun thinking about what your year as president will look like? I've thought quite a bit about it, um, and it's a growing list. Um, I don't have anything to reveal just yet because that list keeps getting longer. Um, I think once I once that list starts to narrow down and I'm kind of in that executive committee role and and I understand what, what everybody else's plans are moving forward, I can kind of see where I fit. Um, but as far as my my time on the EC, um, I can't wait to to sit and listen and learn from guys like Gary and Robert and Woody and and Ali Earlbeck, who um, I just met at this last uh, got a convention. Um, you know, there's there's so many good people in this organization, and I'm really excited to sit on that board and and listen and learn from them as well as the got a staff and got a media i mean there's a there's a lot of things that go into um this organization and pulling off all of our regionals our annuals our spring conventions and so um i'm excited to sit listen and learn and then i'll be ready to dive in when i'm asked is there anything that we didn't touch on that you wanted to mention to viewers before we go today i would like to nudge our members <clears throat> excuse me um, to lean in when asked to participate in GATA. Um, it's uncomfortable. Um, you might not think you're ready, uh, but GATA is ready for you to help because um, every every person comes with a different background and different experiences and perspectives. And uh, we can only grow and be better by learning from those. And then, um, yeah, I just want to thank Bob Ewing, uh, the GATA staff, uh, the executive team, uh, and all the past presidents who've offered their time and advice and uh, expertise as I start my journey. And um, I hope they still have the same phone numbers as they gave me at, in Maui, because uh, I'll be calling them soon to uh, pick their brains. Kevin, we can't wait to work with you during your time on the EC. Congratulations on this great honor, and thank you for being with us today. We've got a great episode lined up for you today, so stick around right after a word from today's presenting sponsor, Cabana North America. Being active for more than 70 years, always following the original mission. Wherever gas is the integral part and provides energy for everyday life, 
there will be the technological and productive commitment from Cavania Group. Earlier this year, Lindy completed its acquisition of Nexair, which had been announced in October 2022. Here to discuss that acquisition and everything that's happened since is Nexair President Bill Proctor. Bill, thank you so much for being with us today. Can we start today by having you describe for us what the acquisition process was like? How did it come about? How long did it take? And how did you determine that Lindy was going to be the right partner for Nexair? Steve, the entire process was uh, about a year long from beginning to end. And what really it started as an exploratory conversation about uh, Lindy and Nexair growing our businesses mutually. Uh, we've been at a, a Lindy or a Praxair distributor really since 1940. So we've had these conversations frequently. Um, over several conversations, they really evolved into more of a business combination discussion rather than a true acquisition. And those discussions were around alignment, strategies, philosophy, and in the end, really what was important to the next year stockholders and really the, des the desire of the stockholders' company's legacy. You just mentioned it. Nexair has had a long working relationship with Lindy, most recently acquiring Lindy Life Gas in 2020. Do you feel that all of that helped lay the groundwork for this deal? Steve, I think that was a piece of it. As I mentioned, you know, Nexair or its parents companies have had a relationship with some form of Lindy, whether that was Lindy Air Products, Praxair, or today's Lindy since really its inception. Uh, and in 2012, we did a joint venture with PDI in the states of Georgia and Alabama. In 2016, we acquired uh, the PDSE business in Florida and Georgia. And then, as you mentioned, in 2020, uh, we acquired the life gas business in the Southeast U.S. You know, really all of those provided great insight for both companies and really some great new team members for Nexair. How would you say that Nexair has changed at all since the acquisition? And what has the acquisition meant to Nexair's culture and to its customers? To be honest with you, Steve, very little. Um, you know, our biggest change, I would say, has been on the accounting side, uh, being a wholly owned subsidiary of a publicly traded company, definitely has required some changes on the accounting side. And I think we've managed that well. Um, at a high level, um, I would say that we've really been extremely aligned with LG&E. Uh, and, and at a high level, that is really take care of your employees, uh, grow the business safely, and make good strategic business investments. From a cultural perspective, uh, our mission statement is very intact. And that, that mission statement is to serve selflessly and assist eagerly to create customers for life. And you know, that's our mantra and we live that daily. Uh, on the customer side of things, I would say they've benefited from the additional product offerings that's come through the uh, business combination, vertical integration of the gas production, and also the uh, research and development on gas applications. From an employee perspective, um, you know, we're still developing talent and promoting from within, but now those opportunities are really more broad uh, than just broader than just the Southeast. Uh, and then we think those opportunities should come from growing the business. So, you know, we're very interested in continuing to grow the business organically or through acquisition. And thus far this year, we've uh, completed two acquisitions and actively looking to uh, see if there's a good fit to uh, continue to do those uh, throughout the rest of the year. We're in a period of merger and acquisition activity in the industry. Do you have any advice for other GATA members who might be considering a merger or an acquisition? What did you learn through this process that you might not have known before? Sure, Steve. I guess what I've learned through this process is in addition to the financial deal structure, um, if you're considering you know, possibly selling your business or a business combination, uh, I would recommend taking a long, uh, hard thought about what resources can the potential acquirer bring to the table to really promote the legacy of your business long term? Bill, thank you so much for being with us today. We really appreciate it. Hobart Institute of Welding Technology is excited to offer a four-day welding for the non-welder course. This course gives the non-welder a solid background and overview of the welding field along with some hands-on experience with the major welding processes. 
It's ideal for purchasing agents, plant managers, manufacturers of welding products, distributor salespeople, supervisors, and more to gain an understanding of welding that will make them more proficient in a job that involves welding-related activities. Check out our website today for more information or give us a call at 937-332-9500. Today's sponsored supplier interview is brought to you by Airgas. We are lucky enough to be joined today by Airgas CEO Marcelo Fiorinelli and COO Jay Worley. Gentlemen, we appreciate you being with us today. Marcelo, could we start today by having you share how long you've worked for Airgas? Uh, Steve, I have nearly three decade uh, career uh, with early kid, uh, and I've been the CEO of Airgas for two years now. Can you describe the company culture at Airgas and how it's changed since the Air Liquide acquisition? From the start, Air Liquide recognized that Airgas had built an excellent track record in serving uh, U.S. customers and wanted to leverage that reputation, performance culture, and operational infrastructure. Our gas continues building and growing today uh, in many of the same ways that drove its uh, foundational success. Uh, meanwhile, our gas benefited from early kids' strengths uh, in topics like innovation, research and development, uh, long-term view and strategy, uh, uh, investment discipline, and a talent development uh, mindset. So with the acquisition of Lindy's uh, bulk business uh, in 2007, Airgas had grown its bulk uh, product supply business in the US. Uh, and with the complementary early kit footprint added into a one network, we have become less reliant on uh, other producers. Uh, one thing that remains consistent at Airgas is that we continue to encourage our associates to act in the best interest of our customers to take ownership of solving problems and finding solutions. Airgas is a place you can call a home and a team you can uh, consider family. Uh, we are committed to making sure our associates feel accepted, heard, and supported to be and to do our best. Because I believe when our associates feel their potential, uh, our company feels ours. What are the key areas of focus for Airgas and what challenges do you see in the next several years? Investing in customer experience and customer journey with the goal of positioning ourselves to best serve our dynamic and growing customer base. Elements include uh, better equipping and training our frontline associates and professional sales force, uh, ongoing improvements in getting our fundamentals right the first time, uh, and step change enhancements in lifting our e-commerce capabilities and web experience. And we believe digital tools will factor heavily in these efforts. And increasingly, we believe artificial intelligence will also. Uh, one of the key challenges over the next few years will be attracting and retaining qualified people in our industry. Uh, and we all have this opportunity to invest in people. New industries and markets are emerging that provide further growth opportunities such as additive manufacturing, uh, the EV market, energy transition related markets, or even uh, the construction of new plants uh, as all those industries arise. So in our cases, our goal again is to deliver the best customer experience in the industry and our people will be the way we get there. How does Airgas continue to grow today? Can you discuss some of the recent growth spurts and how the company intends to continue that growth trajectory? Uh, today, we find ourselves uh, clearly with organic sales growth at the forefront of our growth strategies, but also with acquisition growth as a key strategic element. Uh, given the robust U.S. outlook uh, amongst our customer base, you know, the industry is a strong seller's market in the M&A space right now. Uh, but when we believe that air gas is the right fit, we want to be a seller's first choice. Uh, like Mar Marcelo, I think air gas offers a best in class opportunity for owners as well as employees of these companies um, with both business growth potential and career opportunities. So, so one of our strengths has been uh, our activity and effectiveness in North America and in the North American industrial distribution space. So shortly, after merging the two businesses, our guest acquired TechAir, which ended up uh, being the largest acquisition of an independent distributor in the air gas history. 
bringing in a complex and diverse organization like Tech Air made us focus on bringing multiple moving parts together into a strong operating company. So now that we have completed that process and navigated the COVID-19 pandemic, an area of emphasis for me as the guest CEO is to make sure we maintain that growth and expansion mindset, uh, both organically and through acquisitions. As we look to strengthen our business and broaden our reach, we believe that we still have much to offer owners who are seeking a solution to their business needs. And we also have plenty to offer their employees who are looking for that next step uh, in their career and have the opportunity to grow and develop with a striving company like Airgas. What is Airgas doing to address supply chain issues in the industry? We continue to take action as a company to minimize supply chain disruption effects, safely uh, enhance essential operations, and meet customer needs uh, throughout the country. Most recently, we shared that we have strategically located new Argon storage nodes, moving uh, more air gas product inventory close or closer to customers in response to recent rail transportation delays and logistics uh, challenges, as an example. We expect sourcing conditions to continue to uh, fluctuate in the near term. And as I said, we are monitoring this kind of volatility. So as we and other companies work to shore up supply sources, we remain committed to supplying essential, essential gases, including uh, CO2, to customers while focusing on and investing in increasing our ability to meet demand through sustainable methods. Our gas and early kid are actively investigating potential sources and ready to invest in strong opportunities. How does air gas view the topic of energy transition and what impact do you feel it will have on the industry? As an air liquid company, we are leveraging decades of expertise in production and distribution to support air liquids deployment in the U.S. Uh, around hydrogen energy and mobility uh, to bring to market a cleaner, safer, and more reliable element of the energy transition with hydrogen at the core. So to, to add to Jay's uh, answer, uh, in turn, I guess is uh, reducing our emissions and contributing to any kids' commitment to carbon neutrality by 2050 with a key uh, milestones uh, between 2025 and, and 2035. So we are increasing the share of renewable electricity in our energy purchases, improving the energy efficiency of our production sites, and also reducing the carb carbon footprint of our operations, assets, and, and, product, and, and product transportation. For we know that we can do well as a business and as a company by doing good in our world and conducting our operations and business in a sustainable way. What opportunities are there for the typical Ghana distributor to partner with their gas? Uh, when owners are seeking solutions to their business needs and turn to air gas, we want them to feel confident in their legacy as an independent distributor and know that their legacy will continue even in the face of an acquisition. We have the experience, uh, resources, and the strategies to do this and make these business owners feel secure in their transition. Uh, we are also uh, an experienced supplier of bulk products in the US, which is another way uh, we work with Gauda distributors. Our wholesale team continues to work with independent organizations to supply bulk and cylinder gases, uh, for example, in markets across the country. Uh, we're investing millions to make our supply chain more reliable, more efficient, and on pace with growing market demands. Um, we're always looking for ways to innovate and looking for additional investment opportunities to help grow our business. Can you discuss how Airgas views specialty gases distribution and how that impacts Gauda distributors? Spec gas production is a real area of automation innovation for us. Mm -hmm. We've had some, some good recent innovation and automation that will improve our lead times and this is an area where we are spending a considerable amount of focus in improving the customer experience and reducing effort, uh, the customer effort that it takes uh, to do business with us. For Ghana members looking to do business with Airgas, what next steps should they take? Great question, Steve. 
if a GATA member were uh, interested in expanding their supply chain relationship with their gas, whether it's bulk gas, uh, specialty gases or cylinder supply, equipment, uh, bulk tanks, uh, the first point of contact would be Pat Vicentainer or Scott Street, who are um, good, strong representatives of all that we have to offer uh, to GATA members. Thank you so much, Marcelo and Jay, for joining us today. We really appreciate it. Okay, thank you, Steve. Again, great opportunity to be with you today and uh, uh, appreciate the time we spent together and uh, very keen to continue this conversation. Thank you. Thank you, Steve. It's been a pleasure to be with you today. And we want to thank all of the GATA membership for your attention uh, and for the work that you do in driving our industry forward every day. And we'd also like to thank all of our current air gas partners for your support and uh, relationship over the years. To learn more about air gas, visit airgas.com or click the link in the description below. At this year's GATA Annual Convention, GATA Member Services Committee member Colleen Kohler interviewed Mississippi Welder Supply Company President Scott Myron about the impact that GATA membership has had on Scott and on the company. In the next several episodes, we'll include snippets from that interview, including specific instances where the GATA consultants have helped Mississippi welders. Hi everybody, this is Colleen Kohler from the Member Services Committee here at GAUTA, and we are lucky to be joined with Scott Myron from Mississippi Welder Supply Company. He is the current president, and he is going to be sharing his experience with us today with our GAUTA consultants, which is one of the best benefits of being a GAUTA member. So thank you for joining us, Scott. Thank you, Colleen, I'm happy to be with you. And uh, I have experience with all four of the GATA consultants. I feel very fortunate to have them. We have availed ourselves to them whenever we need them. It's a great source for answers and guidance. And any questions you have, feel free to pose to the consultants. Um, starting with uh, my most recent experiences with Marilyn Dempsey. We had Marilyn in about six weeks ago. And that was actually the result of a conversation with another GAUTA member who had just had her come through their plant. She did an assessment there, and I thought, this is a great opportunity for us. Uh, I, I really wasn't aware of that opportunity with Marilyn, so we invited her in. We had her in for two days. Uh, I think we passed the test OSHA-wise. It was a mock uh, OSHA audit, but we learned an awful lot from Marilyn. Yeah, we're in pretty good shape, but there's some things that we needed to uh, improve upon with, uh, with respect to OSHA. Was there anything that stuck out in particular that you would like to share with us? Or just in general, there were a lot of benefits you saw from having her help you? Sure. One of the primary benefits that I saw is we were able to have our safety director spend time with Marilyn. And he was new to the industry, so this was very insightful for him. It was time very well spent. Uh, Marilyn is very Marilyn is very thorough, but Marilyn is also very kind and gentle and uh, a really good advocate for how to stay out of trouble. Uh, it went very, very well in my opinion, and I would imagine in two years we probably have her back for a repeat visit just to make sure that we're you know in compliance with everything we need to be in compliance with and uh, one of, the, one of the items I look at as president of uh, MWSCO is how do we stay compliant and how do we stay out of trouble? And that really is one of the beauty parts of the GAUTA consultants is you have these experts in the field. You can throw any question you want at them and you'll get answers very, very quickly. To hear about Scott's experience with GAUTA's DOT consultant, Mike Dodd, tune in to the December 15th episode of GAUTA TV. Today's member news segment is brought to you by Anthony Welded Products. With carts, cradles, cages, and pallets, Anthony has a model for every purpose. The American Welding Society named Michael A. Krupnicki as president for the remainder of 2023 and for 2024. 
Krupnicki replaces the late Dennis Eck as president following Dennis's untimely death in August 2023. The AWS also announced the launch of its new reimagined website, aws.org. GAUDA Headquarters Director of Member Services and Programs Andrea Levy visited GAUDA Distributor Member County Welding Equipment in Pompano Beach, Florida. Norco Medical was named the 2023 Provider of the Year at the HME News Business Summit in Charlotte. Welders Supply and Gases held a grand opening event for its new 5-acre fill plant facility. The Horton Group was ranked in the top 10 on Crane Chicago's Best Places to Work list. Nora Cylinder appointed Megan Marjanovic as its new marketing manager. Megan previously worked for Superior Products and Technoweld USA. BNR Compliance Associated appointed Gary Peterson as their new senior business consultant. American Welding and Gas announced the promotions of Billy McQuarrie to the position of facility manager for its Broad Oak facility in Beaumont, Texas, and Tommy Dronet to the position of assistant branch manager of the company's Sulphur, Louisiana branch. Alliance Distribution Partners announced the promotion of Jewel Chamberlain to the Welding Channel Manager. The company also announced that Brooks Cronin is its new territory manager in the Texas market. SFE Group announced the acquisition of Climax Portable Machining and Welding Supplies. And finally, Meredith Gas Partners welcomed Logan Evans as its new Digital Marketing Manager. To learn more about any of these member news items, or to submit member news of your own, read the full November 15th GAUTA Connection in your email inbox today, or by clicking the link in the description below. GAUTA Media is the go-to resource for news and information about the gases and welding industry. Through our wide variety of publication platforms, GAUTA Media keeps our members up to date on all of the most breaking news, emerging trends, and member events in the industry. Want to get your company's message seen? We have a quarterly print publication, a twice-monthly newsletter, an online buyer's guide, and a twice-monthly news show. If it's happening at Gas and Welding, it's happening on Gauda Media. Want to learn more? Contact your Gauda Media representative today. And that's our show for this month. For our next episode, we will once again be doing our holiday card montage to conclude the year. So if your company would like to submit a card for this year's montage, click the link in the description below to learn more. Finally, we're working on the 2024 GAUTA Buyer's Guide. If you're a GAUTA supplier, one of GAUTA Media's representatives will be reaching out to you soon to confirm your company's information for this year's Buyer's Guide and to discuss advertising options for the publication and for next year. As we enter this year's holiday season, we once again extend our heartfelt gratitude and appreciation for the support of all of our viewers and all of the GAUTA members. We wish you and your family a happy Thanksgiving, and we look forward to having you join us next month for our year-end video. For all of us here at Gauta TV, this is Steve Guillermo signing off.